In today's video, we're going to be styling some HTML in our Build Adapt from Start to Finish series. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will be styling the dap that we've been building. So far, our dap is looking a bit ugly and sad. And what we want to do is brighten it up. So let's go ahead. This is exactly where we kicked off the last time. If you want to follow along, I highly recommend watching part three, the previous video, so that you know exactly what we are busy with. The first thing that we're going to do is in our app.js at the very top, let's go ahead and import our CSS file. This is our app.css like so. This file over here. We're also going to select everything in the app.css file and remove it and save the file. Let's close this artifact folder. Then we're going to go to the index.css and in here, all we really need to do is at the top, just put an asterisk and say margin zero as well as padding zero. After saving that, we can close our index CSS and we can just have the app.js open as well as our app.css. In this video, we're going to go back and forth from our app to our code to constantly see what we are changing, updating and seeing the CSS take effect, which should be pretty cool. In the previous video in our app.js file, we already added the class names that we will need to style. So in the return statement over here, for the top level page class, we're going to code that first. So let's head over to our style sheet, type in dot page, and let's begin. We're going to start off by giving this a height of a 100 vertical height and a width of a 100%. This should stretch it out nice and big. We're going to say we display this as flex and the flex direction we are going to set to column. Then for the background color, and this is just for testing, I'm going to make it like blue violet. Let's actually give it just a little bit of a lighter blue. Go ahead, save that. And let's go check out the changes. Great. We have a beautiful purple background. Let's now go back and actually style this header class. We can go and say dot header. And for the header, what we want to start off with is a height maybe of 45 pixels. Then we're also going to give it a background color. This time this Alice blue or maybe just a light, light white off white. For the color, this is going to be the color of the text. Um, we can make it black, but usually it's better if you just do it very, very off off black, like so. This is also going to have a display of uh, flex. And we're going to align the items center. We're going to justify, um, justify the content space between. And we need to add some kind of padding. So we're going to go with zero pixels. Um, on the top and the bottom and 20 pixels for the uh, left and right side. For the font size, we're going to maybe stick with 16 pixels. Let's save this and check what we have. There we go. There's our header with the task manager as well as our address. This is going to take us quite a while to walk through all the styles. So what I'm going to do is actually just point out the style that we're going to apply. So the big button class over there, come back to the CSS style sheet, 
paste it so that you can pause the video and implement it if you would like. And then I'm going to show the results. For the big button, we've got padding, no borders, a bit of a border radius, font size of 16 because it's a big button, a cursor as a pointer, and a light background color. On the active uh, pseudo class, we're just putting the opacity to 50%. Saving that, we'll show you that the buttons now changes like this. Back in the CSS styles, we also can get a small button. These buttons are actually displayed over here. Now you can see they're nice and round, and also the color comes from the HTML uh, inline CSS declaration. Our page is coming along, but let's focus on this input section over here. If you go back to the code, and I'm going to add these two styles, one for the input section itself, and this will display all the elements nice in a row. And then we also have um, this input, uh, which is actually the style itself. So let's go ahead and save this and then go back and see how it looks. Great. Now we have our create ticket button with the input as well as the load data button on the right. Next, we're going to add to the main section just a display flex. What this will do is take the content and list it in a row. Now, this looks great, but it's a bit squashed. So what we need to do is apply flex to these inner columns so that they take up the most available space. To fix that, we have a class called main underscore col. And this is on each column. So it's flexes to one. Let's save this and go back. And now we can see all the columns are nice and stretched. The ticket looks still ugly, but that's what we're going to fix right now. Here on the styles, we're going to add firstly this column heading style, which just gives it a bottom margin to add some space. Then we have our main ticket card, which looks like this. We've got the ID so that it can position itself absolute. And then lastly, a button section so that we can wrap it if the tickets become too small. Let's save this and check out the app. This is our app. I noticed that the to-do button is still blue right here and the busy is green. We can fix that by going to the app.js, scrolling down to the here, and then we can see busy should not be green, but light blue. To do should not be blue, but light pink. The same for this column over here. That should be pink. And the rest, that looks fine. Save it, go back, and now it's fixed. But all in all, our app is complete and I'm very happy with the outcome. Yes, there can be a lot more done to the UI, but this is a fully functional DAP. It is, however, a bit redundant to on every action query the contract. However, the purpose is just to teach you how to interact with a contract. You can do smart things like saving state in the front and only updating it once you save, for instance. But that being said, let's give it a go. Let's say we have a new ticket and we say, refactor the UI. Now that we have this ticket, we can create it, say OK. There it is. And because I'm ready to do that immediately, I'm going to move it over to busy. And there we go. Let's say I made a mistake. I can rename it as well and say, well, Daniel should actually be doing the refactor. So Daniel refactor the UI. And this is how simple it gets to interact with the blockchain and build your own dApps. And that's why it's so cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial series with me. If you did enjoy it, give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe, give me a comment on what you would like to see next. Even if you just want to say hello, I do read them. 
Always keep in mind, I will never give my number away in the comments, so don't respond to any of these scammers down there. And apart from that, hope you have an amazing day. Cheers for now.